Lovely, I can see more people are joining as I speak. So um, I'll just do a quick introduction. My name is Rosie Dodds. I work in the admissions office here at UCL CIS. I'm joined today by Dr. Yatin Lee, who is our admissions tutor for economics and business programmes. Um, so today's session will include a short presentation by Dr. Lee, followed by a Q&A joined by one of our student ambassadors. So feel free to pop your questions in the chat or Q&A function. We'll aim to answer these at the end. Um, I'll now pass you over to Dr. Lee to make a start on the session. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Yatin Lee. I just introduced myself. So I did my postgraduate in Edinburgh and Glasgow. Then I did my PhD in quantitative finance. Then I moved to UCL to teach econometrics. Uh, so I joined the CIS from 2017, then um, teaching uh, postgraduate courses, now also undergraduates. Uh, so currently, if you, if you join CIS, um, next year, you will see me, definitely see me in um, from term one. So you're going to see me all through the academic year. Right. So I'm very happy to introduce our CIS, lovely department for you today. Um, so let's start from where it is. So we're located on Taviton Street, which is a nice street just next to, uh, not far away from the main building, which is the iconic um, picture that you can see from for UCL. So currently you can see on the screen um, this nice little red brick building is CIS. So um, our full name is uh, School of Slavonic and East European Studies. So we call it CIS for short. Uh, so in this building, we have um, classrooms, that we have libraries, we have also um, offices. So um, if you join us, I'm sure you're gonna come, come over to the building quite often. Right, so can I have next slide, please? Yeah, great, thank you. Just a bit history about CIS. So um, the department was funded quite early on, and so we are over 100 years old. Uh, it was funded on 1915, 1915 and uh, we joined um, UCL, so on 1989. Um, then the we are the largest academic unit in UK dedicated to the area study. So you can yeah you, know, you get the sense from the our our school's name. So we are focused on an area. Um, so under that umbrella, we have different departments. We have department on economics and business, uh, department of, uh, about um, history and also politics, society and also language. So um, we are quite um. Uh, combined um, disciplines all over the aspects. Then we currently we have over 1,010, uh, 11 students, 100, uh, over 1,100 students and uh, um, around 100 staff. Then we offer a lot, a very wide range of degrees. We have currently 22 BA degrees, um, 13 MA degrees, um, two M research degrees and a PhD program. So um, if you go for the social media, I'm sure you would find lots of recommendation to our library. It was very nice and lovely. So um, it was located on the ground floor of our building. So uh, it has a very nice atmosphere, atmosphere, then really rich in the uh, books um, in the Eastern European um, area study. Um, also, we have inter and multidisciplinary research and learn teaching um, resources so um all over we have we are also partner with across the region so we have a ma program called ims which is short for this international masters on economy state and society uh, so it, it's a two years program and uh, in this program you have the uh, freedom to choose different tracks and also you got two year time to study in different locations around the world uh, which is a really amazing opportunity to study. Right, thank you. So if we can go for next slide. Uh, why I would recommend CIS for you. So I'm sure you have some initial interest and in, so to bring you here, then I'm trying to let you know exactly our selling point. So first of all, we um, for the degree you earned from UCL, it actually has also offer you a specialist um, in a certain area. So if you go for economics and business, uh, you would learn quite a lot of pro modules regarding that aspect. If you choose for um, history, history, then you also quite got quite a lot of the knowledge and knowledge and applied knowledge um, in the in the history area. Then the teaching we do, uh, we do the large course and also small group teaching. 
So you got the chance to uh, meet all of your classmates, of course, and also got a uh, lot of chance to talk to your teachers, uh, which could happen in seminars, in tutorials, in workshops. Uh, so it's a good combination of different size of group. group. Then we have very wide range of modules, um, as I said, from economics to business to history and to politics and also languages. Then um, because uh, we are focused on the area study, then it's different. You have different aspects in this area study. So we are uh, naturally come up with multi and interdisciplinary study. Then um, we also, apart from your study life, we also offer a wide range of events and research seminars. So um, every week you got chance to join um, a seminar uh, run by top academics that we, we invited all over the world. Um, and so we literally is the best place to study the region in across UK. Um, also, we have a big selling point, which is something we are really proud of. Uh, so in the latest annual program survey, we win over the 100 percent recommendation from our current student. Um, they say they would definitely recommend to our program to their friends or classmates. So we I think we're really proud of this results. Okay, hey, so uh, to be more specific, uh, for the postgraduate stage study, uh, we have uh, two main MA programs, which is called um, Comparative Business Economics MA. Another one is called Comparative Business Economics and, Polit and Policy MA. So these two programs, um, normally we would have a quite large cohort, which is over a hundred students. And um, you're gonna meet lots of, you're gonna make lots of friends from this um, from this program. And also, as we, I mentioned before, we have another program called uh, International Masters in Economy, State and Society, the IMS program. It's a two year, it's a two year program. Um, you have, I think at least one term um, down in UCL. So um, by that time you, so uh, by that time you also have would spend spend some time in London to study with us. And uh, the link below uh, just provides you a full information about programs information that we offer in our main page. Um, it contains the requirements for the application and the and the main program structure that you would have um, in this program. You can find it in on our main page. Okay, so a bit more about what to study um, in our MA programs. So it was combined as two types of modules. One is a core module, which is, which are compulsory uh, to earn you the degree. Um, the other options are uh, elective modules, which you can choose from a wide range of modules. Um, then we are also very special um, for the language courses. So um, you also have a very rich um, language pool, class pool to choose from. So most of those languages are Eastern European language, um, for example, Russian or Czech or, or some Hungarian, which is really interesting to learn. Then um, in, the, in the term three, which is in the summer, you are supposed to write a dissertation. Um, so that will be the requirements for the ME program. And you have a dedicated supervisor for you to, um, to finish this dissertation. He or she would guide you through the entire process. All right, so in the next couple of slides, slides, I'm going to show you a detailed program structure, just to show you what module offered in our program that you can learn. So um, we have uh, term one and term two. Um, so during each term, we have a couple of uh, modules. So as I said, some of the modules are compulsory, which you have to go for. Some of them is, uh, some of them are elective. So for me personally, I teach the quantitative methods, which happen on term one. And also I do some teaching in advanced quantitative methods, which happen in term two. Then um, the idea is you do, you go for these classes, then earn the credits from um, finishing the assessment and you use all of the um, credits altogether to earn a degree.
Right. So go on. Then apart from those, um, I would say a bit more methodology type of modules that you see in previous slide. In in this slide, you see we also offer applied level courses. For example, corporate finance, financial development, or trade, uh, or foreign um, foreign di direct investment or public choices. Um, I would say the um financial development is quite a popular one. Uh, so it was um taught by Eugene or one of um, our colleagues. Yeah, so this brings up to who to teach, right? So um, in next two slides, I'm going to show you some of my colleagues. Uh, so the one to the left is uh, Randolph, then he is a associate professor in economics, specialized in labor market, I guess. Um, then next is uh, Philippa. Philippa is really popular across the students. So she is specialized in, I think, society, then also political economics. And the, followed by Professor Slavo. Uh, Slavo is a professor in industry and innovation studies. Then uh, uh, Slavo also um, supervised PhD students. students. Then also you got Miran. Uh, then in the middle, it was Yulia. Uh, Yulia is a specialist in um, entrepreneurship, and you, we have Powell. With Powell, so um, that was um, yeah demonstrating you you got some um, expertise experts in specific area to teach in that module. All right, so here is an example to show what language you can learn from our special school. So um, we have Bulgaria, Czech. Um, Russian. So the it's a rich um, choices. You have some very popular Eastern European languages, for example, Russian. Also those very, um, I would say a bit niche um, type of Eastern European language. For example, I would say Estonian. So um, not much, you know, not much places, not many places you can find to learn this kind of language. And we offer that chance if you're interested. Right, so um, as I said, apart from learning, you also got the flavor of doing research. So in our department, you can join the research events. So um, in each week we have a research center, then we have the center invites over the academics all over the world, come up to give presentations, just to talk about their latest research progress or the findings then uh, we welcome all the postgraduates to join the event. Then, um, uh, then he, um, also you can, you, you can seize the chance to discuss um, your research interests with these academics and also our academic staffs. Right, so also we have a big selling point about um, the careers that you could pursue after finishing after this um, degree. So um, the data we demonstrate you here is from the graduate outcome survey um, from 2018 to 2022. So we have quite a lot of gra graduates. They join the financial service and accountancy um, sector. So 50% of the graduates went to that sector. Apart from, apart from that, um, you can do technology and IT, then counseling, then also research. Uh, so in terms of the employers, um, the PwC is uh, quite a big name for in our um, graduate. Then some of our Chinese graduate, they went for China Construction Bank and Deloitte and Bank of England. Bank of China. So see, um, I would say the, um, the, the the employer that you can go for, uh, we have quite similar um, potential employer to the other UCL departments specialized in economics and business. All right, so um, what, your application. So what we are, what are we looking for? So generally, we are looking for two aspects. One is a strong um, um, academic performance, which was demonstrated in your, I guess, transcript. Then also some of your maybe um, supporting documents. Um, if you've done some research, if you've done some extra um, uh, 
specialized exam results we are happy to see to prove you academically quite competent and also we have an emphasis on your motivation um, because we are not a normal um, a regular economics program so we wanted to see why you wanted to come over to cease to study business, economics and business so we want to see a clear motivation in a statement interested in the region the region study right so um so i couldn't exhaust the all the information we have for the cis so um please do go to the following places to find out relevant information you have the um you have our main page uh, main website to contain all the information about cis also you can reach out to our admission team which i put the um email address over here then the handbooks uh, the handbooks form and modules um from the cis website provide you the information about uh, the what the study what the study life could look like if you join CIS. All right, thank you then. Thanks for uh, spending time with me. Um, if you got the questions, then we are happy to answer. Thank you, Yatin. That was great. Um, so yes, again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to pop your questions in the Q&A or even the chat function. We've also got um, one of our student ambassadors on the call as well. Perhaps they'd like to introduce themselves. Uh, hi, I'm Finn. Um, I'm currently studying for an MA in Russian studies, so not business and economics, um, but I'm also studying a language as well. So if you have any questions about that or about studying at CIS or being a UCL student, then I can answer any questions on that. Thanks, Thin. So um, our first question is for Yatin, and this is about the GRE test. Is this compulsory to study at CIS? Uh, if you go for, if you apply for these two MA programs, I, I'd say yes, because we um, look for an, um, a certain level of math, uh, a quantitative um, skill, because you're gonna learn um, econometrics or apply the statistics, and uh, you need that for your dissertation. So we need to see the evidence that you have certain level of foundation to understand some basic um, mathematics or apply or econometrics concepts. So that's why we ask for the GIE mass results, just as a proof. Thank you very much. Uh, Finn, we've got a question for you. Do you live close to the university and what are the accommodation options you considered? So I live in um, Wembley, which is another part of London. So it's about a 25 minute tube ride. I live in um, private halls. So it's a university hall, but it's not affiliated with UCL or, or a particular uni. So it's sort of a mix of people who study across London. Um, so that's an accommodation option. Uh, the other options, UCL does have some postgraduate halls that they offer, but it is limited in terms of space, so they don't have rooms for every student studying at postgrad level. So uh, I would say if you're interested in that, then apply earlier. There's also just other accommodation options, like people just live in rental properties with friends or roommates, uh, with private landlords. And there's also quite a lot of people who live at home as well and commute in. So that's also a an option that's quite popular for people as well. Thank you. That's great. And Finn, just to follow on from that question, uh, what's it like living in London as a student? London's a really exciting place to live as a student because I guess of the scale and the opportunity it brings. So obviously the university has you know, lots of activities and stuff, but also just the city in general. You know, if you have a niche hobby that you like to pursue, there will be opportunity to do it in London. Um, there's a big social scene, you know, music and exciting things going on. And also a lot of opportunity to work as well. If money is a concern, there's lots of sort of different types of jobs available. Brilliant, thank you. And Yatin, I've got a question for you. Um, so I want to work in finance. Is this a viable pathway for me? Um, I think it depends on who is a potential employer. So in terms of those, um, I would say those big names across the market, I guess a degree from UCL will help you to pass the filter. Um, but, you know, when over the, your interview also depends on your performance, then uh, hopefully you can, you know, learn enough from the C's, then that would help you as well. 
Great, thank you. Um, do you recommend these programmes to mature students? Sorry, what is my... Oh, all right. So, um, yeah, so why not? So um, as long as you want to learn, you can, with, you know, either branch of our department, then it's a great, you, you have great chance, great chance to learn. Great, we've got another question that's come through on the Q&A. Um, can I just jump in there? Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Lisa Rose after admissions, I'm in the admissions office. Just a note for mature students, absolutely we welcome mature um, students, but if you have been out of education for some time, we do normally like to see either relevant work experience or recent study. So if anything more than kind of six years plus out of formal education, we'd normally want to see on your CV that you've been working with economics or statistics um, to kind of compensate for um, any gaps in, in knowledge. If you're in any doubt, you're very welcome to email the admissions team and we can have a look at your, your history and your transcripts. Thanks, Lisa, that's great. Um, so the next question that's come through on the Q&A, do you have many international students? And if yes, which regions? Sorry. Um, I guess. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. I, yeah. Good. Yeah. Have fun to answer. Maybe from student perspective. How do you feel? Um, so obviously I'm a home student, but I would say there's quite a lot of international students uh, on my course, especially on language courses as well. Um, so I, I know there are a lot of Chinese students uh, studying Russian at the moment um there's a couple of japanese students as well and also quite a lot of eastern european students from the region um the regions that we're studying as well can i just um jump in as well just to say that the general makeup of our postgraduate body um, is about 50% international, if not slightly more most years. Um, economics and business, we do have a lot of students from China um, and Asia on, on the course. Um, but yeah, it's a really international school. We've got over 65 um, nationalities studying with us at the moment. So really diverse and, and um, you'll meet people from all over the world. Thanks, Lisa. So the next question on the Q&A, what is the part-time uh, schedule? You want me to take that one? Um, so part-time part is effectively exactly the same curriculum, but split over two years. So you'll do half of your credits in year one. Um, and then, so you do 180 credits of study for a master's degree. So you'll do 90 credits in year one, which would normally include your compulsory methods, modules, and a couple of electives. And then in year two would be when you write your dissertation and again, do a couple more electives. In terms of contact hours, it would be around four to six hours a week of lectures and seminars, less in year two because you're doing your dissertation, which is much more private study, meeting with your supervisor on a regular basis. Um, on top of that, though, you are expected to do a lot of private reading, research, being in the library. So if you're doing it part time, although you'll be in class maybe four hours a week, um, and that could be kind of Monday to Friday, depending on your timetable, but you'd probably be in twice a week, maybe um, on, on campus, you'd be expected to be doing around 10, 12 hours on top of that in your own time, doing your research, writing up, etc. Thanks, Lisa. And this might be a question for Yatin. How many contact hours will I need to complete my MA? Uh, probably the detailed contact hours. I maybe ask Lisa whether that, would that be yeah. So um, I would say um, in the term one, uh, maybe is that contact hours will be more than term two because um term one term two is uh, still the um teaching time. Then we have term three for the uh, dedicated for super, for the um dissertation. Um, yeah, Lisa, do you have more? Um, just have a have a, uh, have a reckon about um how many contact hours? On average, it's about eight to ten hours a week if you're doing full time study. If you're taking language, it might be a little bit more because they're often a bit bit more intense in terms of the hours. Um, but I'd say between 10 and 12 hours a week during terms one and two, as Yatin said, in term three, it's mostly about writing up your dissertation and taking the exams. So you won't have actual classes in term three. 
Thank you. We've got the question for Finn. What academic background did you have before entering your master's at UCLC? So I uh, did my undergrad at Bristol Uni and I actually studied ancient history. Um, so a, an essay humanity subject, but quite, I guess, different because it was, you know, studying things that happened 2000 years ago and not stuff that's happening in the news now. Um, but I would say that for sort of, I can't speak for economics. I imagine you probably have to have maybe a similar background in order to study that. Um, but certainly for things like any essay subject, or if you studied a language before, those skills are gonna be really useful and you can transfer it. So you don't necessarily have to have studied exactly the region before um, because a lot of skills can transfer over. And I just had an interest in my sort of free time in the region. So that's why I wanted to pursue it at a master's level. Vivian, thank you, Finn. Um, I've got another question. This might be for Yasin and Lisa. Um, is language compulsory to study at CEAS? Um, I think to the MA, um, the two MA programs uh, may be not compulsory for the language, but if you go for, if you go, if you apply for the IMS, then especially the uh, the language track, I would assume, is compulsory, right, Lisa? Uh, but it's not compulsory. We we like to see students who've got that kind of cultural awareness and, and have maybe studied language, um, but it's certainly not essential because we teach you from beginners. So if you can kind of show an interest in that, that's fine. For the two MA courses, as Yating said, it's not compulsory. You've got the option to learn that if you want to, once you're here. But if you decide that's not for you, you can supplement that with other economics or business-based modules. Thank you both. Um, so the next question on the Q&A, um, how is the employability opportunities after graduation? Very good, I would say. Um, I, yeah, I think I don't know if you want to jump in after me, but um, our graduate outcomes, as we showed on one of the slides, um, you know, our students tend to end up in the kind of financial accountancy sectors with very well known employers. Um, the employment rates are very high. Um, they're in the high 80s, early 90s most years with students getting those professional level jobs once they've graduated. Um, it is important to note that students are only surveyed 18 months after graduation, which is why some of the statistics you might think they're a little bit old, but that's because we don't survey students for 18 months until they've graduated. So that's why um, we haven't got the stats yet for this year, but they are very high and we really help you um, it, during your time here at CIS. We have a careers tutor, we have um, a careers service, you can book one-on-one -on -one appointments with them. We have an alumni evening where we invite former students back to network with you and tell you how they got their jobs um, and we have an, an annual CIS employers evening where we invite um, companies who are very interested in the skills that our students have to come and talk with you and, and have those networkings so it's up to you to make the effort to make the most of those services but we give you a lot of support and I think the statistics show for themselves that students end up in, in very good jobs. Great, thank you very much. Um, and my next question, what is the difference between studying at undergraduate and postgraduate? Um, maybe sh I'll be answering that question first and then maybe Finn can add, because um, yeah, good to know how the students think about. Um, so because I teach both undergraduate and postgraduate, so um, I would say um, the skill to do a bit of research and also um, self-study may be emphasized in the postgraduate um, because we have actually um, uh, a focus on your dissertation and um, all you learn, all the modules you learn from the term one and term two, you can use them as material or the inspiration to um, do your dissertation. Um, so we have a very strong support in the quantitative methods, I would say. So um, I'm sure your econometric skill will be enhanced um, during this program. Um, for the undergraduate, um, we make sure these, all the students got the very individual care then they could you know give them a very good start journey in the academic in the academic life 
Um, I would say you have much more sort of free will and independence um, in terms of especially like picking your elective modules. It might not necessarily have anything to do with your specific course, but for example, a language, um, you know, you have the sort of freedom to sort of pick even a really niche language. Uh, I would say perhaps learning a language as well is more sort of intensive at postgrad level because you are you know maybe only here for one or two years and you they still expect you to get to sort of the same level you might get on a three-year course um but i would say it's it's a step up but it's a good step up and you you could sort of use the skills you got from your undergrad um to your advantage Thank you both. Um, for the next question, what is the social life like at CS and UCL? Um, I guess I'm probably the best person to answer that. Um, I would say that because the courses are smaller in terms of the number compared to our undergrad, it's quite close knit uh, as a community. So we all sort of share modules, even if we're not necessarily doing the same course. So I have friends who are studying politics or economics, but because we're all doing a language, um, sort of we become this community. I say everyone's really friendly, even though people are from lots of different backgrounds. Um, so some people have not been at university for 20 years. Some people have been working full time jobs, but we all get on really well. CS does, as, as was said before, there's lots of sort of research seminars and things, but there's also a CS society uh, that sort of put on maybe more social events um, to do with the topic, but also just for getting to know each other. Uh, so yeah i'd say it's a very social place um and i was worried coming here because i hadn't studied here before that perhaps people might know each other but there's lots of new students here as well as people who have uh, moved up from undergrad and everyone's very welcoming and and friendly okay thank you um we've had a couple of questions about um entry requirements lisa would you mind just sort of generally summarizing that for our viewers yeah of course um so these are competitive master's programs. We have limited space and we can't offer um, offers to everybody that meets the minimum entry requirements. So the minimum we would look for would be a good 2-1 degree. So ideally 65% average or above if you're studying in the UK system. Um, we do like to see evidence of economics, particularly macro, micro, um, and ideally some kind of statistics or quantitative methods, because this is quite a quantitative course, um, plus a good GRE score. Um, and also, as Yatin said, a good motivation as to why you want to study this degree. Um, I see there's a question asking if they've got a, if you've got a low to one degree, is it possible to get in? It's not impossible, but you will be at a disadvantage. It, it will depend on the strength of the applicant pool. Um, and based on previous years, those with anything kind of low to one are unlikely um, to be admitted to the course. But we do look at the overall application. So if you had a very high GRE or GMAT score, for example, that may compensate for slightly lower scores elsewhere. Um, but it is competitive, so we can't comment on anyone's chances. Um, I also note someone's asked, do CIS undergraduate students need a GRE grade? Um, the GRE or the GMAT tests are usually for students who've studied outside of the UK. Um, so if you're studying at CIS, we wouldn't normally ask for you to do that. If you've already got a GRE score, absolutely put it on your application, um, but it wouldn't be compulsory. So I hope that answers your question. Thanks, Lisa. That's great. Um, another question. Can I work alongside my master's? Um, yes, I mean, I, I, I might ask Finn to elaborate um, in a minute, but absolutely you can. If, if you're an international student, you will be restricted by visa requirements. Um, the maximum amount you can work is 20 hours a week is quite a lot I would not recommend doing that alongside a full-time master's um, but you can certainly work alongside and a lot of our students do have part-time jobs to support themselves whilst on the course um, there's lots of employment opportunities at UCL itself um, you know we have we pay student ambassadors to to help out with open days and things um, there's the student union shops and bars that you can get involved with that there might sometimes be paid research work um, but London's a great place to get part-time employment um, so there's lots of opportunities to do that 
as long as your studies don't suffer you know the priority is is your master's so we would not recommend really any more than kind of 10 12 hours a week of of working if you're studying full time as well Finn I don't know if you've got anything to add to that or yeah so um I obviously work as a student ambassador so this is a paid role um I also do some tutoring on the side do some evening waitering on the side um what I would yeah as was said just now you should be very wary of the hours you're taking on and promising to employers if you do want to work part-time because I have known people at undergrad and now that perhaps their employers um want them to work a certain set amount of hours that perhaps is too much to juggle especially if you're studying full-time as well so just to sort of be conscious of the fact especially when it comes to exam periods or assessments are due in it might be in the first few weeks that you have more free time but when it comes down to sort of uh you know the final few weeks you really sort of need the time to be focusing on on the masters on the degree so it is there is lots of work available but just to sort of be wary of um maybe taking on too much as well. Thanks, Finn, that's very helpful. And my next question is for each of you, actually, how would you describe the CIS community? Um, uh, so I'll go first. So I think my um, my students um, in CIS, um, particularly in economics and business, I find they are very vibrant and really proactive um then very friendly um so um as finn said um actually you can make you, you see students from all over the world um i will say indeed so postgraduate is um quite a lot of chinese students but still um you have chance to meet students from other side of uh, other side of the world and because we offer so many different events and ac activities so you can you know um meet friends then also see different aspects of life than got even within the seas, no mention in London. So um, for, for from the study side, I find um, most of our, my students, they are quite proactive. So very good attendance rates to the lectures, then really proactive during tutorials, asking questions, then also um, sometimes challenging around the questions and also you know very um, likely very like uh, very loving to form kind of a study group to study together so uh, some of them find it's really helpful uh, yeah as i'll just carry on from what was just said but yeah it's a very diverse student body uh, but it's very friendly and kind and you know we all have sort of differing perspectives and opinions but there yeah there is this sort of nice element of debate especially in sort of politics or economics classes um so you're really sort of allowed everyone you're sort of allowed to sort of stretch your I guess arguments and sort of engage in sort of friendly uh debate and um yeah it's just a very vibrant nice community um I would say that personally I prefer it to my undergrad um, sort of faculty, I found that this piece is much more sort of friendly with their students and sort of putting on these events and stuff to sort of improve camaraderie and things. Now I'm coming at this from a slightly different angle because I'm not a student or I don't teach, but I have worked at CIS for 10 years. So I think that says something in itself about what a warm place it is um, and how collaborative staff and students are. Everyone is super friendly. Um, and I think you don't always get that in larger departments where students might just be um, a, 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 a nameless face in a lecture theatre. Um, staff and students tend to work a lot more closely here. Um, and that's really good when it comes to things like your career because it means your academic staff can write you meaningful references because they actually know what you've done rather than just be able to pull your marks off and say you know you've achieved this they've worked with you and they often know your aspirations and um, can vouch for you which really does help when you're applying for either PhDs or going for those kind of top level jobs um, so it's a really nice place to work really collegial and um, yeah but you've got all the benefits that everything UCL has to offer being part of such a large institution and all the kind of 
great things that that brings with it but having a nice home in a small department where everybody is friendly and knows your name and says hello in the mornings thanks everyone and um, we've had a question on the q a are these courses recognized in the actual central and eastern europe countries yeah i mean it's a ucl degree um and without blowing our own trumpet we're top 10 consistently in the world so our degrees are recognized everywhere um they're they're very high quality degrees they will enable you to access programs in america in europe wherever you decide to either continue your studies or work um a ucl degree is is recognized and validated in in all countries that we we know of Thanks, Lisa. The last question on the Q&A is about calculating the overall grades. Could you just highlight how that is worked out? Yeah, so we generally, we will look at your average grades across the years because we like to see a consistent performance, but we also recognise that students do normally have a trajectory in marks in that by the final year, you know, you, you've hopefully improved. Um, so there's no kind of exact mathematics to it. We'll work out the average, but we'll look at your transcripts and if your final marks are clearly strong and above those kind of average two one um, then that would stand you in good stead but as I've said we look at the whole application so it will also be your GRE your references and your statement that we would want to to see lovely thank you very much we've run out of questions on the chat so just a reminder to all of our viewers if you want to pop your questions in the chat we can answer those before the end of the session. But just as another talking point, could you just talk about um, what facilities are available to use at CIS and within UCL buildings as well? Uh, so I'll start to comment. Um, so obviously library, you've got library facility, especially, uh, of course, apart from printers and these study um, materials. Um, we also have database. We have a um, data stream, which is a very important source for students to collect data for their dissertations or their own research. Um, then apart from that, I think we got, um, we got a lovely, um, I would say, common room called the Masaryk Room in CIS building, uh, where you can go for events or just, you know, getting around with, with your friends or having lunch together. So it's a nice social place. Um, yeah, just adding on to what was said, obviously the library is humongous. Um, it's like three <laughs> floors and there's so much material that you can access. So for example, I do a module on Russian foreign policy and there's access to a database which can give us sort of Russian news articles that is translated if you if you don't can't read ru Russian, um, which is really, really useful. So you can access material that's sort of being sort of written uh, as you study. Uh, yeah, there's the common room. Uh, I think there's a CIS specific careers advisor, I'm pretty sure, um, who could really help you if, you know, if you really want to use whatever you've studied in your future degree. Um, and of course, there are the sort of administrative people who are really helpful um, if there's any, any um, ever, ever any issues with modules or uh, exams and things like that. Thank you very much. Um, so we've got another couple of questions that have come through on the Q&A. Um, how much is the tuition fee and is accommodation available here at UCL? Tuition fees, they're all on the prospectus, but as an example for the comparative business economics, um, if you're a home student, it's 22700 um, if you're an international student for that one, it's 34,400, but it does vary by program. So do check the prospectus and also it will obviously depend whether you are um, a home or an international student. There is accommodation available, but it is limited for postgraduate students because UCL tries to prioritise undergrads who perhaps haven't lived away from home or been to university before. So you can absolutely apply for UCL halls of residence um, and there are provisions for that, um, but it's not guaranteed. Um, a lot of our master's students um, stay in private accommodation around the city and the accommodation office can help you with looking for that or kind of getting recognized landlords um, 
I think Finn kind of touched on this earlier about living um, in London. Um, but yeah, in short, there is some available. Brilliant, thank you. So we've had a question on the Q&A, which might be something that Lisa can answer directly on the, on the, on the Q&A function. Do we have any more final questions before the end of the session? If so, um, now's your time to post them on the Q&A. So we'll just wait a couple of moments to see if anybody else has any further questions. Could I um, just add something onto the fees? Um, there is okay, also, see. just so you're aware, um, and this is something that I'm a recipient of, there's the sort of master's scholarship bursary. Um, so you have to come below a certain income threshold um, but that could be really useful so for example my course was 14 grand um, and then my household income was sort of low enough that I was able to uh, receive it and so now I only have to pay four grand so effectively the uni paid 10 grand of um, that fee uh, which has been you know it, it means that I can actually attend the course uh, because I wouldn't be able to afford it otherwise so just have a look, I think, the, on the website under like fees and funding, there's a link to all the various scholarships or bursaries you can get, as well as the student loan uh, from Student Finance England, or I don't know if international students can get a, a student loan as well, but just to sort of be aware of that, because that could really help with fees. That is a really good point. And just to note, um, the bursary, I don't believe, is available for international students, but there are a number of various scholarships um, that are worth doing the research for. So there is the UCL scholarships finder, depending on which country you're from, it is definitely worth having a look and seeing whether you're eligible for any of the funding that's on offer. Um, we don't have any departmental funding for our masters, apart from the IMS programme, um, where we have six scholarships each year that we award. Um, that's normally based on merit, so you don't need to apply separately um, for that. But UCL does have quite a lot of opportunities, so do have a look, um, like I say, on, on the scholarships finder. If you just type in UCL scholarships finder into Google, um, you'll be able to have a look at what, what's available. We don't appear to have any more questions on the Q&A, but I have just popped in the chat our MA admissions email. So if you do have any more questions after this session, please feel free to send those through and the team will get back to you as soon as we can. We've also posted the um, CIS website as well to find out more about us. And I've also popped the link in for the economics and business programmes for you to have a little look at as well. So I think that might be all the questions for today's session. Thank you to everybody who tuned in today. Hopefully you found it really useful and we will be in touch with um, the recording as well if you do want to catch up and re-watch it and just pick up on anything that you might have missed. Otherwise, thank you very much for attending today and we hope to hear from you soon.